you know, imagine if, you know, certain you know, facts about the world, you know, the temperature outside or, you know, things like E equals MC squared could be controlled, owned by a single person, right? That would be taking something that is in the public domain um, and taking it out and providing it as property to a person. When we talk about copyright, that's effectively what it's doing. It's saying these things that otherwise might be in the public domain that could be shared and built on freely, we're gonna give a property right to someone. Now, that can be good, right? The core of copyright, the, the purpose of it is creating incentives for people to create for the public's benefit. Um, so that, you know, closure can be justified, but we also have always recognized that there are downsides to it, to taking something and meaning that the public can no longer freely build on and use it. And so there've always been limits. And again, that's, you know, limits on what's protectable expression. It's other limitations and exceptions for educational uses or news reporting or in the U S fair use that terms expire, right? That when a work is old enough, it is made, it goes fully into the public domain. So we've always had that both, you know, the, the copyrights protections, but also limits. So that, that enclosure hopefully doesn't go too far. And when people, you know, talk about when it is ethical, let alone legal to use some piece of information, we always need to ask, right? Is it ethical for people to enclose this information? When is it unethical to stop people from using, you know, the temperature, you know, saying, repeating that the temperature outside or e equals MC squared or using that basic building block of language or music, because that information, that knowledge, those cultural artifacts ought to belong to the public. So in terms of principles, where does that leave us? I think from a copyright perspective, the first key principle is, you know, is this protection necessary, this enclosure necessary in order to encourage creativity for the public's benefit, right? If creativity is already booming, it's abundant, it would happen anyway, and this doesn't interfere with it, then th there should not be an issue there. Um, I think the second sort of related piece, um, once you go a bit deeper, is, is the use involved about facilitating new creativity or about communicating an expression that directly substitutes for the existing work that it's using? So, you know, when we think about generative AI, these are tools for productivity, for creativity, not for piracy fundamentally, right? They're not about... Um, simply reusing the works that they were trained on in the outputs. And in fact, that's considered, you know, a bug, a failure mode and something to be avoided. Um, that doesn't mean that there can't ever be issues of infringement in the outputs or even in the models, right? You could imagine a large language model that's trained on all of Harry Potter for the express commercial purpose of helping you create and sell your own Harry Potter books. Right? That would be a very different fact pattern than, you know, what you see with ChatGPT and, 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 and the like, right? And so I think we have to look very carefully in terms of principles is, is what's happening here a use to substitute directly for the expression, not just you know creating language or creating music that happens to be in the same market, because we want to, the copyright's purpose is to incentivize more creativity, right? When somebody uses a tool like Suno or Udio to create a new song, that's very much in line with copyright's purpose. The only place where it crosses the line is when, or where it should cross the line is where that output actually is directly substituting, reusing um, that communicative expression embodied in some specific work.